It's that time of the month. We are going to read some of the best answers that we got in the comment sections of our videos. And as I've told you guys before, we do like to engage with you. We want to hear your stories and also share our personal stories. We hope you enjoy those. And uh, there were a lot of really, really fascinating responses we got this month. I can't wait to read some of it, so let's get started. When we covered uh, the Ebola rap song, uh, we asked, what's something that you've been ignorant about that someone schooled you on, right? Now, this is a really difficult question to answer because you have to admit that you were wrong about something and someone schooled your ass. Well, Travis Schley had a really great answer. He writes, one thing that I was incredibly ignorant on was blackface. I used to not understand why it was wrong until recently Shane Dawson made his apology video and I decided to look into the history and I realized how fucked up it was. I even did blackface once as a joke, not understanding what I was really doing. Now that I understand the history, I'm mortified that I even did it in the first place. I was actually really ignorant on a lot of black issues. I was ignorant on white privilege also until I seen a lot of stuff on TYT and decided to educate myself on that as well. I realized how uneducated I was about black issues in this country. I'm really glad that I learned better because I was just straight up ignorant before. I still am ignorant on a lot of issues. There are so many things I've been incredibly ignorant about. These were the most recent. I'm really glad I keep an open mind because I would still be the same old self if I didn't. Keeping an open mind is critical for growing as a person. That is honestly the most mature response I have ever read on YouTube. I mean, I, if I could hug you right now, I would do it. I'm giving you a little cyber hug because you're freaking awesome. It takes a lot to admit that you were wrong about something. And not only are you open-minded, you're very self-aware and that is beyond admirable. And I thank you so much for sharing your answer with us. I mean. That honestly gives me a little bit of hope when it comes to the online community because we tend to get a lot of terrible, nasty comments. All right, so we also did a story on Pat Robertson, one of my favorite uh, wannabe religious pastors in the world because he's crazy. And we asked you guys, who is the most ignorant person you've had to deal with? Only Half Bad 333 had a great answer. Most ignorant person I know was an old coworker. He's a creationist, so I'm sure some can relate. One night we were talking about the age of the earth, science, the Bible, dinosaurs, and dragons. And this is what he said from what I can remember. Dragons are real. How else would different cultures in different parts of the world have similar looking dragons? Jesus Christ. They obviously existed. Otherwise, how would they how would they have done paintings and illustrations of them? My brain stopped working for a few seconds because I couldn't believe he used that as proof of creationism. I mean, those people exist. And I think the scariest part about that is some of them are doing everything they can to get rid of fact-based science classes and replace them with a lesson plan that is based on creationism. That scares me more than anything. It's one thing for people to be willfully ignorant. It's another thing for them to force their ignorance upon us. And unfortunately, that is happening in, that con in our country as we speak today. We did a story on a beggar who got caught driving a brand new car. Of course, that led to a lot of controversy. And we asked you guys the question, have you ever caught someone in a lie? Wise Man Time says, when I lived on the street, I did anything or everything I could to avoid begging for money. I found it degrading and shameful. I couldn't allow myself to lower myself to the level of a beggar. That being said, I also know people who did just this and they were the scummiest of people. They knew what they were doing and enjoyed it. it it takes a special kind of person to do this, and money or not, they are enjoying taking advantage of you. All right, so I think that, of course, situations like that exist, but the vast majority of people that are on the streets and they are homeless and they are begging for money do need it. Now, I don't think it solves the problem to give beggars money, but I think that it is important to have a broader discussion about how our system is set up and why it is that the freest country in the world with all these capitalistic opportunities has such a huge problem with homelessness. So uh, I, I love these types of topics. They're really difficult conversations to have, and I do appreciate you sharing your story. We talked about a cancer victim who came back to life, and we asked, what's one ghost myth or story you've actually bought into? 
Here's what the curmudgeon had to say. I only believe in things that can be backed up with evidence. I don't believe in God, ghosts, spirits, alien abductions, Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, Yeti, telekinesis, homeopathy, astrology, evil eyes, karma. Although I do believe bad things can happen to bad people because they tend to piss people off. Uh, and then he also states a bunch of other things like acupuncture and a whole host of other nonsensical things that tend to get popular for no reason. I agree with you. I like evidence. Um, I did talk about karma a little bit uh, when we covered this story. I also talked about how I worry about people giving me the evil eye. It's a weird superstition that I have. I know that it's not based on fact, but I feel like when you brag too much about your success or what you have, people who are jealous of you are going to wish bad things upon you and then bad things will happen to you. So sometimes you believe in superstition, even if it's not fact-based, but overall I think it is important to have the same mindset that the curmudgeon has. By the way, the curmudgeon sounds like Dave Kohler from The Young Turks. Like, he's just perfect. All right, we talked about uh, the woman, or the girl I should say, who put a potato up her vagina as a form of contraception. That was a crazy story. And the question we asked you guys was, what is the craziest thing you've tried as a form of contraception? And uh, Papa Tooney says, gay sex, it equals no pregnancy. I love that. All right, you guys, your answers were wonderful. We love hearing from you. It at least gives me a sense uh, of what type of people watch the show. I love connecting with you. Look, I share my personal stories, so the fact that you share your personal stories with me means a lot to me, and I definitely hope you guys enjoy the show. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, we are growing rapidly, and I love it. We like to have a lot of fun on this show. Sometimes we have serious conversations, sometimes we have lighthearted discussions, but nonetheless, it's always a good time. And of course, have an excellent week. We'll see you guys soon with another episode of The Point.